In this video, I'm going to focus on nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. So let's say if we have an acid chloride, which is a type of carboxylic acid derivative, and let's react it with a negatively charged nucleophile. Let's use hydroxide dissolved in water. Now, how will hydroxide react with this acid chloride? What do you think is going to happen? We're going to consider two cases where hydroxide reacts with the acid chloride molecule and also when a neutral a nucleophile water reacts with it because they both can react with it. Now, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So oxygen is going to bear the partial negative charge and the carbon atom is going to be partially positive, which means hydroxide, which has a negative charge, is attracted to the partially positive carbon atom. As you know, opposites attract. Negative charges are attracted to positive charges. So the hydroxide is going to attack the carbonyl carbon, and the weakest bond is going to break, the weakest bond being the pi bond. So this is going to produce a tetrahedral intermediate. We have the hydroxyl group on the bottom, the chloride group on the right side, and an oxygen with a negative charge, and three lone pairs. Now this tetrahedral intermediate is unstable. It has a lot of electronegative atoms attached to the tetrahedral carbon. So what's going to happen at this point is that the best leaving group is going to leave. The best leaving group is the weakest base form. The weakest base is chloride. Hydroxide is a much stronger base than chloride. When this reforms the pi bond, the chloride group is going to leave, turning this molecule into a carboxylic acid. Now, under basic conditions, the carboxylic acid will not remain in its protonated form. Another hydroxide ion is going to immediately get rid of this uh, hydrogen producing water. So therefore, we're going to get the carboxylic ion under basic conditions. Now let's see how the mechanism differs if we use water as a nucleophile. The generic mechanism is still the same. Water has an oxygen which bears a partial negative charge and it's still attracted to the partially positive carbon atom of the carbonyl group. So the first step is very similar. The nucleophile is going to add uh, to the acid chloride. So now we have an oxygen atom with three bonds. Whenever oxygen has three bonds, it will have a positive charge. The other oxygen has a negative charge and we still have the chloride leaving group. So now another water molecule will be used to get rid of this hydrogen. Turning the OH into a bad leaving group. And then this can reform the pi bond, expelling the Cl. So now we have a carboxylic acid. So that's a simple way in which you can convert an acid chloride into a carboxylic acid. Simply add water to it. Now what's going to happen if we take the acid chloride and react it with an alcohol? Let's use methanol as an example. Go ahead and predict a product and propose a mechanism. Whenever an acid chloride reacts with an alcohol, it's going to produce an ester. The side product is HCl. So all you need to do is simply replace the leaving group, Cl, with everything except the hydrogen. So the ester that will be produced looks like this. So this is methyl ethanoate or methyl acetate. 
plus uh, HCl. Now, because acid chlorides are very reactive, you don't need an acid catalyst to speed up this reaction. You can just put the alcohol with the acid chloride, and it's going to react on its own. The reason for that is Cl is a good leaving group, making the acid chloride very reactive. So just like before, the oxygen with the negative charge is going to attack the carbonyl carbon. So this mechanism is very similar to the last example. Now this oxygen will still have three bonds, a lone pair and a plus charge. So just like the other example before. Now last time we took off the hydrogen first. If we want to, we can kick out the chlorine right now. The end result is still the same. So this is what we currently have. So all we need to do at this point is simply get rid of the hydrogen. So we can use another methanol molecule to act as a weak base to accomplish that. When the oxygen attacks the carbon, it's behaving as a nucleophile. When it abstracts the hydrogen, it behaves as a base. And so that's the mechanism of the reaction between an acid chloride and an alcohol to produce an ester. Let's work on some more examples. But for these examples, you don't need to show the mechanism. Simply draw the major product of the reaction. So if we mix this particular acid chloride with one butanol, What's the product of this reaction? So once again, all you need to do is take away HCl, which is the side product, and then simply connect these two portions together. So we're going to get an ester with a total of six carbon atoms. So it's going to look like that. Now what about these two? What if we mix isopropyl alcohol with this 4-carbon acid chloride? So once again, just take away HCl. And then you should get this product. Let's try one more example. Go ahead and draw the major product for this reaction. So let's take away HCl and then let's connect this part of the molecule with this portion. So we're going to get phenyl benzoate, another type of ester. So that's it. That's how you can quickly predict the major product of an acid chloride with an alcohol. Now, what's going to happen if we put an acid chloride with an amide? Or not an amide, but an amine. So let's react it with ammonia. What product will be produced in this reaction? And also, Let's draw a mechanism. When you combine an acid chloride with ammonia, in this case, you're going to get an amide, which looks like this. Now go ahead and propose a mechanism for this process. So just like before, the ammonia molecule is going to attack the carbonyl carbon. 
As you can see, this chapter is not going to be too difficult. Most of the mechanisms are very, very similar to each other. The nitrogen is now going to have a positive formal charge. And in the next step, we're going to kick out the leaving group. So the last thing that we need to do at this point is simply remove a hydrogen from the nitrogen atom. And to do that, we can use another ammonia molecule. Granted, we could do it here before we kick out the Cl. So that's an option too. And so now we have the amide. Now that you understand the mechanism, go ahead and predict the major product between this 3-carbon acid chloride and this amine. So this is a primary amine. Once again, the side product is going to be HCl. So we're going to combine this portion of the molecule with this portion. And we're only going to lose one hydrogen on a nitrogen. Keep in mind, nitrogen likes to form three bonds. So here's a nitrogen. It's going to be attached to the six carbon ring. And it started with two hydrogen atoms, so it's going to keep one of them. And this is the product of the reaction. So once again, the side product is HCl, which is usually the case when you start with an acid chloride. So anytime you react an acid chloride or any one of the carboxylic acid derivatives with an amine, you're going to get an amide. If you add an alcohol to a carboxylic acid derivative, you will get an ester. If you add water, you'll get a carboxylic acid. Now what's going to happen if we react an ester with water under acidic conditions and under basic conditions? What products will we get? Under basic conditions, you're going to get a carboxylate ion and methanol as a side product. Under acidic conditions, you're going to get a carboxylic acid with methanol as a side product again. But the mechanism is different. Let's go over the mechanism between the ester and hydroxide with water as a solvent. Like any typical nucleophile, hydroxide is going to attack the carbonyl carbon. And so you're going to get this. Now what do you think is going to happen? Now when this tetrahedral intermediate collapses, it can expel the hydroxide ion, but it can also expel the OCH3 group. And when it expels the OCH3 group, this particular step is not reversible. Because under basic conditions, the hydroxide ion will quickly deprotonate the acid given us the carboxylate product. And so that's the product of this reaction. But now what about under acidic conditions? So let's start with the same ester. And let's see what's going to happen. Now the first thing that we need to do under acidic conditions is we need to protonate the ester molecule with the hydronium ion. So here's a question for you. Which oxygen atom is going to grab the hydrogen? Is it this one or this one? Think about it. To answer this question, let's draw the resin structure of the ester. This oxygen can donate a pair of electrons, causing this pi bond to break. So that's going to give us 
a resonance form that looks like this. So based on this resonance form, which oxygen is more basic? Which one has a stronger affinity for the hydrogen atom? Of course, it's the one with the negative formal charge. This oxygen has a positive formal charge. As you can see, its electrons are not available to grab a hydrogen. It's busy forming a resonance structure. It shares some of its electrons with this partial positive carbon atom. So therefore, the hydrogen is going to go on this oxygen. Resonance structures can help you determine which atom in a molecule is more reactive, as we've just considered. So let's begin by adding a hydrogen to the carbonyl oxygen. So now that oxygen is going to have a positive formal charge. So now once H3O plus loses the hydrogen, it turns into water. Under acidic conditions, water is going to behave as the base slash uh, nucleophile. H3O plus will behave as the acid. So now water is nucleophilic enough to attack the carbonyl group now that it has a hydrogen attached to it. So this is what we currently have. So this is now an OH group. And this is still here. Now what do you think the next step of this process should be? Whenever you see an oxygen with a positive charge, the hydrogens attached to it are very acidic. So we're going to use a water molecule to remove a hydrogen atom. Now our goal is to transfer a hydrogen from this oxygen to that oxygen. In order to get the carboxylic acid, we need to remove this group. Under acidic conditions, OCH3 is not a good leaving group. But if we add a hydrogen to it, it can become a good leaving group. And we're going to use the solvent to transfer a hydrogen from this oxygen to that oxygen. So once water takes away the hydrogen, we now have this particular uh, species. So now water is in the form of H2O plus again, which we can use to transfer the hydrogen onto the OCH3 group. So now we can get rid of the OCH3 group. Now that's a good leaving group. So we can reform the pi bond and expel methanol. So after this step, what we now have is a protonated carboxylic acid molecule. So our last step is to use water to get rid of the hydrogen. You can also use methanol at this point. But there's probably a lot more water molecules in the solution than methanol molecules. So that's the mechanism for the conversion of an ester into a carboxylic acid under acidic conditions. So now let's work on some problems. What products will form if you add H3O plus to this uh, particular ester? By the way, adding water to an ester it's not going to be enough to turn into a carboxylic acid. The reaction is too slow. So you need to add H3O+, you need an acid catalyst, and you also need heat to speed up the process. Now once you add water under acidic conditions, 
this bond is going to break. So on the left side, you're going to get a carboxylic acid. On the right side, you're going to get an alcohol. That's how you can quickly draw the products of that reaction. So let's try another example. So if we have an ester that looks like this, what are the products of this reaction? So you want to cleave this bond. On the left side, we're going to get benzoic acid. And on the right side, isopropyl alcohol, which is the side product. Let's try one more. Let's say if we have a very big molecule, that looks like this. What's going to happen if you add H2O plus and heat? So in this case, identify all of the ester functional groups. We have an ester and another ester. This is a ketone. So if H2O plus, it's not going to cleave around the ketone. All of the ester bonds will cleave. So on the left side, this portion, let me just highlight it in yellow, that's going to turn into a carboxylic acid. On the right side, this is going to become an alcohol. All we need to do is add a hydrogen to the oxygen. And then we have the molecule in the middle. So this side is going to turn into an alcohol, and this side will become a carboxylic acid. The ketone will be unaffected. So we're going to get these three products in this reaction. Now what's going to happen if we have an amide? And let's react it with a base. Let's say if we add hydroxide to it, what's going to happen to the same amide? Now you may need heat to speed up this process. In this reaction, the amide will be hydrolyzed into a carboxylate ion. And you're going to get ammonia as a side product. But now how can we propose a mechanism for this process? So the base is going to attack the carbonyl carbon, as it usually does. Now, in the next step, the NH2 is going to be removed. And you need heat to speed this up. Otherwise, it's difficult to do. And so you're going to get a carboxylic acid which is not going to survive for very long because the NH2 minus, which is very close to it, is going to quickly grab a hydrogen. And so that's how you can get the carboxylate ion. Now let's say if we have a molecule that looks like this. What products will be obtained if we add hydroxide and heat? How will this molecule decompose into smaller parts? So under basic conditions and with heat, we know that the ester bond is going to cleave and the amide bond will break up. So on the left side, this part of the ester will turn into a carboxylic acid, but it's going to be deprotonated. So we're going to have the propanoate ion. And on this side, the amide part 
that has the carbonyl group, that's going to turn into a carboxylate group. So we're going to have this. And then we're going to have this uh, molecule. So on the left side, we're going to have an alcohol, and on the right side, an amine. So these are the products of this reaction. Now here's a question for you. What's going to happen if we combine, let's say, an acid chloride with a carboxylic acid molecule? What product will form? So with an acid chloride, you already know that HDL is going to leave as a side product. So we need to connect this side and this side together. If we do that, this is going to give us an anhydride. But now let's go over the mechanism for this process. So the carboxylic acid is going to react Actually, here's a question for you. Should we use this oxygen to react or this one? Which oxygen is more nucleophilic? Now, like the ester, we can draw the resonance form. So notice that this oxygen carries the negative charge. So this is the form that's more nucleophilic. Let's go back to that last page. So what we're going to do is take this oxygen and react it with the acid chloride. So I'm going to put the Cl group on the bottom and this oxygen on top. It's now attached to this oxygen, which has a carbon, a double bond O, and a hydrogen with a plus charge, which is this group. And this carbon has a methyl group. So now in the next step, this is going to form a pi bond, expelling the chlorine atom. So all we need to do now is simply remove this hydrogen. So we can use another carboxylic acid molecule to do that. Or in fact, we can use chlorine actually. The chloride ion could take away this hydrogen, turn it into HCl, and HCl is a gas, so it's going to leave giving us the acid and hydride. Now, if you have a carboxylic acid, what will happen if you add SOCl2 to a carboxylic acid? You need to know this reaction. Adding SOCl2 will cause the hydroxyl group to be replaced with a chlorine group. So this is going to turn into an acid chloride. That's how you can make it. So this reagent is very useful. Now what's going to happen if you have two carboxylic acids next to each other and if you add heat? If you add heat, water is going to be removed. You're going to lose an OH and a hydrogen. This is going to turn into an anhydride. So this is the product you'll get. And if you add a lot of heat, water is going to vaporize into steam and it's going to leave. So that's another way in which you can make an anhydride using two carboxylic acids. You can also 
convert it into an anhydride using SOCl2. Now once you add SOCl2, one of the carboxylic acids will initially turn into an acid chloride. They won't react at the same time unless you have two SO2 molecules being at the right place at the right time. But the chances of that happening is slim. So one of the carboxylic acids will turn into an acid chloride. At that point, the other one can react with the acid chloride. And so you're going to lose HCl, which we covered the mechanism for this already. And then this is going to turn into the acid anhydride. So this is another way in which you can turn a molecule that has two carboxylic acids into a cyclic anhydride. Now what if we have a molecule that contains an alcohol and a carboxylic acid? And let's add heat to it. What do you think is going to happen? Whenever you have a carboxylic acid reaction with an alcohol, under acidic conditions with heat added, it's going to produce an ester. So what we're going to do is we're going to redraw the molecule in a different way. And water is going to be removed. So this is going to produce a cyclic ester molecule, which looks like this. This is known as a lactone and what is the side product. Now what if we have a cyclic amide? What's going to happen if we add base and heat? So you know an amide will convert into a carboxylate ion and an amine. Well, this is going to happen as well. The only difference is the ring is going to break apart. So let's go over the mechanism for this process. So we know the hydroxide ion is going to attack the carbonyl carbon. And so we're going to get this. And then we're going to get rid of the nitrogen atom. So on one side, we have a carboxylic acid. And on the other side, we have a nitrogen with a negative charge, which will quickly get rid of this hydrogen. So this is our product, which, if we want to, we can draw this way. Let's count how many carbons we have. One, two, three, four, five. So we have an NH2 on one side and a carboxylate group on the other. So this is the product of the reaction. Now what's going to happen if we mix an amide with, let's say, uh, SOCl2? What product will be produced in this reaction? It turns out that SOCl2 can convert an amide to a nitrile by the removal of water. Notice that we're losing an oxygen and two hydrogens. But water is not going to be the side product. You're going to get other products. But let's talk about the process. So what's the first step in this reaction? How can we show the mechanism for this process? Well, first, we need the more reactive form of the amide. This nitrogen will form a pi bond, causing the other pi bond to break. So at this point, the nitrogen has a positive formal charge, 
and the oxygen has a negative formal charge. Now that oxygen will react with SOCl2. SOCl2 has two chlorine atoms, an oxygen and a lone pair. So the sulfur is bonded to three electronegative atoms, which means it has a very strong partial positive charge. And so the oxygen with the negative charge is attracted to it. And so as it attacks the sulfur atom, it's going to expel a chloride group. So now this is what we're going to have. The oxygen is now attached to the sulfur, which has a double bond oxygen. And it still has a chlorine atom and a lone pair. So now the chloride ion that was expelled, we're going to use it to act as a weak base to remove the hydrogen. So we're going to get HCl. And HCl is a gas, which it's going to escape from the solution. So therefore, this process is not reversible. And once HCl leaves, the reaction has no choice but to go to the right. So the evolution of a gas, the formation of a gas, provides the driving force for this reaction. There's a lot of gas molecules that will be created. So now what do you think is going to happen at this point? The nitrogen with the lone pair can use that lone pair to form a triple bond, causing the carbon-oxygen bond to break. Those electrons are going to be used to form a double bond with the sulfur, expelling the chloride group. So now this carbon has a triple bond with the nitrogen, and the nitrogen still has one hydrogen left which means it has a positive charge. The sulfur atom now has two oxygen atoms. It lost both chlorine atoms and now has only one lone pair. So this is SO2, which is a gas, and so that leaves the solution, causing the reaction to drive towards the right. Now the other chloride ion that was expelled will remove this hydrogen, turning into HCl, which will also leave as a gas. So there's three gas molecules forming this reaction, which accelerates the reaction towards the right. And so now we have a nitro. 